Okay, so um, we thought we would talk to you guys a little bit about adoption and about disruption in adoption. Um, there's some news going around. There's a number of people that are disrupting. And if any of you don't know what that means, that means that um, if they've adopted a child, that the, they've decided not to keep that child. And they actually either find another family for the child or return them to the agency they got him from. They've decided to not to con not continue parenting the child. Right. Would probably be the way to say it. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And um, Karen and I are the mom and dad of six blind kids. We have six adopted children, and uh, they are all. Um, well, five of them are were from international adoptions originally, and uh, all of them are uh, beautiful children who all have special needs. And uh, so we've been through this, and uh, we want to talk about uh, talk about disruption. We don't ever like we're very uncomfortable ever coming out and speaking about any other people in particular, especially someone that we don't know, have never met, don't are not invested in their story, don't know anything about them. But the one thing that we do know a little bit about is adoption. And we do know, I think probably more than anybody um, that I've ever met anyways, we do know a thing or two about disruptions in adoption since Joe and I have been through that ourselves twice. Once, you know, it was our own, we were young, we had first started out the, um, you know, our journey into adoption. And when Hannah was five years old, we had a, a child placed in our home, uh, for adoption and within seven weeks we began to realize that we were in way deep over our heads we um, we had no idea the extent of her needs we didn't understand what was going on let alone how to parent this child in fact we were just talking about this earlier um, we didn't even really understand what was going on with Hannah at that point. Right. So we had, um, our son Joel was 12 years old, Hannah was five, and then this um, this young lady who had joined our family was eight, and everything was just chaotic. Everything was turned upside down, the dynamics in the uh, relationships and everything. It was, it was like living a nightmare, and we didn't, we, we, of course, did not know, like I said, we did not know what was going on or how to, you know, identify the needs or work with them. But we just had professional after professional after professional telling us, you know, coming to us with another bad report and another bad report. And, and the behaviors were off the charts. And we just, we were like at our wits end and felt that we were not the right people to parent this child and so we made a very heart-wrenching decision within seven weeks to not to not continue parenting and that is known as a disruption in adoption right now when any child comes into your view for adoption uh, the information that you get as an adoptee adoptive adopting parent is Sketchy. It's very sketchy. <laughs> at best, right? At, at very, yeah, it's very sketchy. And the, the adoption agencies are putting together a file for that child. And the file is, has cultural information, it has birth information, it has health information, it has social information, it has all those things. And yet it's definitely not complete. People don't always tell the truth. Um, sometimes they just have they have a lack of knowledge and information. Now, the other thing that happens too is even when uh, a, an adopting family is presented with the information that a child has special needs, what happens during the process of adoption is you become completely sold out to this kid you right. are you're so excited to bring them home you're you're very anxious you're you've gone through a very long process to get to that point to begin with uh you know and so you are not capable of making a a, a very difficult decision usually 
with your head, you're leading with your heart. And, right. and so I think that when you go into adoption, you are, you know, you've got these ideas about how, you know, oh, I, I'm just going to go save the world and, and adopt yeah. this orphan. And, you know, I'm, and they I'm, need a mom and a they dad. They need a mom and a dad. And we have a family. We're going to, you know, this is unconditional love. And let me tell you, once those, uh, the child comes home and the, you know, the first few weeks are usually fine. And then, you know, they call that the honeymoon period. And when the honeymoon is over, oftentimes it is over. And the behaviors that come out are, it's like sometimes, it's just like you don't even know what in the world happened. And, and it, it, there's very little help and support that's usually available. The yep. social workers that are, um, that are placing these children, especially through the private agencies and whatnot, they're not necessarily trained to deal with a child's needs. They're there, their purpose is to place that child with a family. Right. And while they do the best that they can to weed out and vet prospective parents, um, you know, things get missed along the way. And it's impossible until you've lived with someone it, you know, to really understand what that's like. Now, we're seeing a lot of things, you know, about this family out there and a lot of shaming and judgmentalism and things that just are really not setting very well with me. I, I've seen videos that are made by third parties, other YouTubers who are shaming this family because you know, they gave their kid back and this is How not could a anybody dog. Ever How do could anybody you know, and yeah. and really on you know, on the surface, I understand where those feelings, you know, are coming from, but to make a video about that is beyond inappropriate because unless and until you have gone through the process yourself and adopted a child and lived through these situations, you have no earthly idea what you're talking about and you have no business making derogatory videos about other families judging them for the you know the the lifestyle that they have and all of a sudden now you know you're going back and you're you're looking for the terrible things and you can't judge someone someone's parenting based on a decision that they make because disruption and adoption does happen and it happens a lot it happens more often than people think it's uh the statistics we've seen for international adoption at least are one are <laughs> one are your plan upstairs <laughs> one in four international <laughs> adoptions of of kids older than two or three uh, end mm -hmm. up in, yep. a, in, in a end up in a disruption so the success rate of international adoptions is three in four. And like Karen said, mm -hmm. the, the social workers are not trained to assist through that process. Nope. The parents, when they go through this after the honeymoon phase of how that how that family is supposed to uh, get support. And one of the things that the home study agencies do is that they wanna make sure that you, as an adoptive parent, have supports mm -hmm. in place that you're supposed to be able to go to yeah. to get help, whether it's financial support or your spiritual support or emotional support, family support, those kinds of things. And yet those support <laughs> systems Guess are not are not are, <laughs> are not geared for this extraordinarily complex uh, process. And when you add a special need on the top reality of reality of what happens with your family, your friend, your church supports, whatever you think is in place to help you through. Oh, the they're gone. They're gone. They disappear. <laughs> you as, know? Soon as, as soon as, as soon as little Johnny starts, starts throwing uh, stuff you know, across starts, the room and, yeah, and you know, starts banging yelling his head and on the wall and yeah. or having a meltdown yeah, that's uh, what or happens. disrupting, uh, you know, a, a church service or other things like that. So things you're happen. on your own. You're on your own. You're on that's your right. own. So the agency's not helping. Mm -mm. Your normal support systems are not helping. And, mm -hmm. and yet the desperation to a family comes in that that doubt comes in that that child may or may not be a good fit for that good family. Fit. And that's a heart-wrenching kind of situation. It is. And so what you need to understand, guys, is that, and I've said this a hundred times in our videos before, it's like disruption oftentimes, it's just... Many times it's just another stepping stone on a yeah. kid's way 
to find their family. And I know that in this particular case that we're referring to right now, um, another family apparently has been identified. And stepped and, up. And I would be willing to bet that this child was not and would not have been on their radar right. had this not occurred. So that's what happened in our situation with this young girl back, you know, 20 years ago. The the family who did become her forever family, who was well equipped to parent her, yeah. they weren't in the position to adopt. What right. they did is they stepped up in an emergency. And I'll tell you something, the, our family, we went on to adopt four more kids yeah. who came to us By through way disruption. Of- by way of other families. By way of other families. Who thought at first mm-hmm. that they were the forever family for those four kids. Yeah. And yet they weren't. The forever family mm-hmm. was us. Nope, that's right. So there are multiple sides of this. Our theme song says every change has a reason. And you there's a meant to be mm-hmm. aspect of life that um, those every storm, every season, you know, mm-hmm. has a, a destiny. I know that when we went through it, but I tell you what, I would not have been wanting to go through that publicly because no. it was hard enough to go through it privately. Yeah. And for three years, if you remember, we didn't, you couldn't even mention no. the A word to me because no. I, I was a the mess. The adoption word. I was a mess, you yeah. guys. I was a mess. It, yeah. you, you know, everything that you think that you are and and have ever dreamed i mean it's just gone it's just it's gone in a minute and you know and you're questioning your ability to parent and you know just your ability to be a human being i mean it's i can't even describe to you how devastating it is to go through that and you know i think that what we need to do when we come across families who have experienced this regardless of what the circumstances are i think we need to offer them support we need to we need to understand that the child will most likely be in a better place for them. The family will be in a better place for them. You know, the other children that are in a home, you know, you don't know the dynamics that were going on between the children. They're going to be in a better place. And it is, it's a very, it's as if, it's almost as if someone's died in the family. Yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot That's of grieving That's the loss going that goes on, on and the sure. grieving, you know, the every, child. Every and, party is grieving. Oh, it's, it's horrible. And, and you the know, last thing anybody needs is shame or... Or, or some, or, you know, some, you know, young single YouTuber who, who's never done anything in his life except make videos on YouTube to come along and tell them what horrible people they are. That has to stop because yeah. that I tell you what that and that's what prompted this video, because I'm pretty disgusted by that, yeah. you know, to go and, and, you know, just begin to shame other people for something that you've never done, would probably never do and don't know anything about you know, and this business of, you know, special needs, if you're going to go into adoption, you better just understand going into any adoption that you're going to be dealing with special needs. Yeah. The one thing that you're never told is that, is that these kids, whether they are a newborn baby being placed for adoption from their birth mother there is so much that goes on, you guys. You have no idea. And there almost always are issues that crop up in life. Yeah. You know, you may not see it right away, but there are things that, that come up later on. And and oftentimes, you know, these kids, they've come out of traumatic situations. They've been yeah. neglected. They've been abused. They've been, you know, rejected. Neglected. The things that they've gone yeah. through, you can't even begin to understand. Yeah. Very uh, recently, about two years, well, now it's been, well, two years ago she left, but about almost five years ago now, it's hard to believe, but um, we had a phone call to bring in another child and and we did we stepped up it, and it was a family that had gone to another country and after a few weeks had decided to disrupt that adoption yep. we brought her in and you know tried to tried to adopt her and because joe was out of work at the time we actually couldn't get approved for the home study because we didn't have an income so you know so she she had to leave but you know what she is with the family that she was meant to be with. Yep. But for two and a half years, 
let me tell you what we went through. The behaviors, the acting out. Unbelievable. It, I mean, I, I poured myself into that girl. And we loved her and we, loved, we her, loved her dearly, dearly and yeah. wanted to adopt her and still do and always yeah. will, you know, but she, because of our circumstances, she's where she's supposed to be. And, you know, and I just, I've seen our, our six kids, I've seen our kids grow closer together yep. because they're, the dynamics were such that, let me tell you something she demanded the attention of everyone yeah. in, in the family. And, you know, I, I knew I got it. You know, we've been, it wasn't our first rodeo and we were able to understand, you know, what she had been through and, and be there for her. But it was extremely difficult for our family to go yeah. through. And, you know, and so it's, I don't know, it's just, so the other thing is Ugh. that it's hard for families to be on YouTube to oh begin with. Oh my goodness. Because people think that what's happening on the camera is happening all the time no. or that uh, you're seeing a you know complete and total view of a family's life. Mm -hmm. Well, when a family has a child, uh, and we see this all the time, that have, that have a special needs or a or a um, um, special mm -hmm. situation in their in their family mm -hmm. that they're not going to put a lot of that information yeah. on YouTube, and they might put some to help other families because obviously there are there are yeah. issues, and and we do it. We put some, some. situations. Some. Hopefully, the learning experiences we put those. The challenges we we put a little bit of that up, but and it, know, but it's important we don't, we for don't, our kids' um, privacy as well. Yeah. And you'll notice, too, that we don't feature Jesse and Obed as much as we do the other kids. No, right. Cause That's they, done on purpose. Yeah. And so <laughs> you know? uh, we don't vlog every day, and you're not going to see. And other families don't vlog. Many don't vlog every day. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, for, for those families that are struggling, um, and there are many of them out there, uh, they really need, if you, if you see families that are out there and they're taking their kids to therapies and they're trying to go to doctors and they're trying to figure out what's going on, what you don't see is a lot of the emotion and the, and the impact that that is having on the rest of the family. If you see, hey, somebody's taking, you know, kid A off to therapy B mm -hmm. and next day it's therapy C and taking kids B to therapy D and you go through this process know that that family needs some help and needs right, some, support and some support and some grace and a, an encouraging word because you're not seeing, you know, the worst of it all. No, because the parents are going to put be, on the, the, you know, the strength. Yeah, and they need prayers. They need mm -hmm. thoughts. They need tangible support for what they're going through. And I think that's kind of a good point, too, because... You know, when you go to adopt a child, like I said, you just have to plan that you're going to be dealing with some special needs. I, in my opinion, every kid has special needs, you know, and some are more severe than others. You might have medical, emotional, you know, all kinds of issues, you know. And rarely do you ever know everything when you adopt a child. R rarely, yeah. if anything. But the the point I'm trying to make is that you're going to be sacrificing your life. Yeah. You know, it's not, and, and I wish that people understood. I think that when young couples go to adopt children, and it was the same with us, it was all about us. It was all about us when we, we right? Yeah, first, Growing yeah, our family. For sure. Yeah, right? absolutely. And so, and so just understand that, you know, this other person who's coming in is, it, they have a whole background and history, and you're going to be making some sacrifices. And if you're going to go into the area of special needs adoption, you're going to be sacrificing a lot, in maybe your even for the rest of your life. Right. And, you know, it's I mean, we had, you know, different ideas and hopes and dreams of what our family yeah. would look like when we first started out. And, you know, by the grace of God, we've been able to adjust and understand what our future is. Right, but the idea that uh, a special needs child who's adopted is going to come into the family and be a, have mm -hmm. typical 
expectations of them, mm -mm. whether they might be going off to college and play sports and, you know, get be able married, to get have married, children. live on their own and all that kind of stuff. You know, be a straight A student, you know, right. whatever it, ideas you have in your mind. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it happens, but the reality is that there's challenges and there mm -hmm. will be challenges and those challenges are typically more severe than what you know at the beginning mm -hmm. because you don't know all the things that are, that are in play, mm -hmm. you know, for those kids that are coming into your family. What that means is you have to be prepared, mm -hmm. right? You have to be prepared. Well, you can't always be prepared. You kind of, you know... It's baptism by fire. Good. Well, that's true too. That's true. You but <laughs> as, if you have an idea that you're going to be empty nesters and be able to go on cruises mm -hmm. and and leave your kids at home and they'll be fine. And sometimes, I mean, some families have a lot of support yeah. and you know and and can work that out with extended family yeah. and and whatnot. Yeah. But most of the time, you can just plan on being you know on your own. Yeah. And uh, independence is a uh, is a is a real issue. You know, as these kids mm -hmm. grow, they all need some kind of uh, support system, you know, to when they get older. <laughs> but the future plans get disrupted. Right. In an adoption that's normal. But, you know, the last thing that we should be doing is is to, if a family decides that that's not for them, this is not for everyone. No. And, you know, it's better for you and better for the child to make that decision as soon as you know it, yeah. you know, rather than to kid yourself because worse things will happen. And I just think that we need to extend grace and understanding and compassion to anyone who's going through a disruption in adoption because it is, it, it's one of the most difficult, heart-wrenching things a family can possibly go through. And I think, too, that rather than criticize or um, point out someone for what you would never do, for example. You don't know what you would you do. You don't know what you would do mm -hmm. in, until you're in that situation. But I would suggest that we that you reach out with, if you're going to say something, you reach out with help and with assistance. You be the support that they need. You can say to somebody, regardless, regardless of what the situation, a, don't be a judgmental person sitting on the outside looking in to that Reach out to that family and say, is there something that you need? Hey, you know, that what happens you... to us all the time. Yeah. You know, like subscribers, they'll, sometimes people are very critical. And then other times people will like, you know, send a product that they believe in, that, you know, that they think that we need. We, we appreciate that. You know, whenever, when there's constructive criticism or you think that we're not doing something quite right or whatever, I mean, it's, it's, it's welcome. You know, because a lot of you do know a whole lot more than we do about, right. you know, any one given. But the help doesn't need to be extreme. It can just no. be a kind word. Right. You know, en rather than tearing somebody down. What's the point in that? Yeah. But so, that's all I got to say about it, I think. Okay. Well, it happens. A it happens Disruption a happens lot. a lot. It's adoption, just a part of adoption. Yeah. And adoption is not something that... Um, adoption is something that you can't, it's not about you saving the world no, don't or let saving it be that. one child or saving a child from something. The reason why that child is placed for adoption yeah. is placed for adoption is that there are circumstances that that child mm -hmm. has found him or herself in that situation and that child has come upon them innocently. Mm -hmm. But there are sources of support for that child, um, and you don't have to be the exact one unless you're the one. But you can't really take on a take on a, a hero mentality or a. That's super not going to help anybody. It's not going to help anybody. You that or you the can child. do it. You'll both and, be miserable. Yeah. So. You have to look into now that we've been in this for 20, 24 years. Of them walking, walking past right now. You know, we've been in this twenty four years. We don't know any everything, but we do know a lot because uh, we have been we've been through this. You before. know, been through this, uh, been through this a lot. But um, if you're going to adopt a child and adopt one with special needs, go in with your eyes open 
and understand, try to find some help, not from just the people that are in your circle. You're going to have to reach out a little bit further. Mm -hmm. uh, those medical conditions, emotional conditions, and other things are, are, are typically more severe than what they're telling you. And uh, don't dismiss the information that's coming to you as well. That's okay. You know, we'll get we'll get over. No, that. you need you to listen to, to what seriously. the professionals are telling you, and yeah. and you know you'll get conflicting reports a lot of times. But you need to kind of put it all together, and yeah. you know we had the same thing. You know, there were people telling us things, and we didn't listen, and you know, and and we don't have any regrets. I mean, we're no. we're kind of at the place where that they warned us about. You know, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you know now is we're we still here. Transition and still into here. adulthood, but yeah. it's um, I tell you what, it's it's everything that we can do to uh, to manage most days. But yeah. you know, we're we're doing okay. Adoption and, is an amazing blessing. Yeah, it is. Um, it can be. And you know. for you know, for families mm -hmm. and for siblings and. And folks that need to be part of a part of a family, mm -hmm. it's an amazing gift. I'm very thankful that our kids have each other. I'm very thankful they That's, have each other as yeah, well. Yeah, because they're going to need each other. Yeah, they will. Forever. Mm -hmm. Forever. That's forever family. Yeah. Every change.